So today in class, we practiced lesson 13, which was really creating box and whisker plots. We worked on creating them and we worked on interpreting them. Tonight for homework, I would again like to build more on our box and whisker plots and I'd like to teach you something new about them today. So people kept track of the amount of time it took them to wait for fast food. And here are the minutes they waited um, in our data set. The first thing we need to do in order to correctly create a box and whisker plot is to order our data from least to greatest. Okay. It's really the box and whisker plot is really talking and teaching us about the range of our data and how it's distributed. Okay, so now that it's ordered least to greatest, there's five things I really want to find. I want to find the lower extreme or the minimum. I want to find the upper extreme or the maximum. I want to find Q1, Q2, and Q3. And I'm going to again walk you through the process of how I do this. Okay, so starting left to right, okay, the first thing I am going to do is calculate the median. I have four numbers crossed out on this side and four numbers crossed out on this side, telling me that I have two middle numbers now. Mathematically, to prove, I know the middle of that is seven and a half, because in between seven and eight is seven and a half. However, to mathematically prove that, you can add your two middle numbers and divide by two. Perfect, okay? I am going to draw a line and I am going to put my median here. Seven and eight are not my medians. So I'm going to cross them out, okay? So this is our median, also known as quartile two. So I'm going to write that down right here. And let me fill in what I do know from this list too. The lower extreme or my lowest number is two and my upper extreme or highest number is 15. Now I need to find quartile one and quartile three. Quartile one is the median of the lower half of your data. So I'm going to cross it out the other way here and I can tell that quartile one is three. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing to my upper half of data, and I can tell that Q1, oh, I'm sorry, Q3 is 10. Okay, Q1, Q2, Q3. I love that they're in order, okay? Now I'm gonna create a number line to help me create my box and whisker plot. My maximum, my minimum, two to 15, so I'm gonna choose to actually go from 2 to 15, and I'm going to count by 1s. Okay. I'm going to put dots in my lower and upper extremes. I'm going to put a vertical line at 3, a vertical line at 7.5, and, and a vertical line at 10. I'm going to connect my vertical lines with a box, and I'm going to connect my extremes with a whisker. Hence, box and whisker plot. Okay, this box and whisker plot visually allows me to see the range and distribution of my data. Since it's broken into four sections or four quartiles really, each quartile, no matter how big or small it is, represents 25% of my data. And we worked on really talking about that today, okay? The new thing that I would like to teach you in today's video is called interquartile range. Okay? This is going to help us see how much our middle or 50% of our data, um, how much it varies really, and how um, much the range is, okay? So to find our interquartile range, you take your number for Q3 and you subtract it from Q1. It lets you understand where the middle 50% of your data lies and how far it ranges. Q3 is here at 10, Q1 is here at 3, and when you subtract them, you get an interquartile range of 7. And if you look, it kind of makes sense. Our interquartile ranges from 2 to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? So 
let me go through one more thing with you today. Um, let me do calculating the interquartile range from Khan Academy. Okay, and I'm going to try to do one with you. The following frequency table shows the number of hours of sleep that each of the staff members at Eroy's Electronics got on Thanksgiving night. Okay, so this is the number of hours, and this is the frequency that that hour occurred. Okay, so three hours of sleep one employee got. I'm going to write that down once. Four hours of sleep zero people got. Five hours of sleep four people got. Wow. That is a common, it looks like it's the most frequent number of, of hours of sleep. Six hours happened twice. Seven hours happened once. And eight hours also happened once. Now it wants us to find the interquartile range, or IQR, of the data set. So I'm going to change my pen color here. I am going to start by doing the five number summary again. Lower extreme, upper extreme, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three. Even though I really only need these two, you have to kind of look at all of this in order to make sense of this problem. Lower quartile three, upper quartile eight. Now I'm going to find the median first, or Q2. Okay, I have a Q2 of five, and it is in my data set, so I can circle it and I don't need to use it for the upper and the lower quartiles. Now I'm going to cross out the other way. I have two middles here. Five plus five is 10 divided by two. My lower quartile or Q1 is five. Ooh, matching my Q2. Cross it, cross it. Six plus seven is 13. And when you divide 13 by two, you're gonna get a decimal of six and a half, okay? Now, I'm going to use my calculator, don't really have to, but 6.5 minus 5, or Q1 taken away from Q3, is going to give me a difference of 1.5. So let's see if I can do some fancy footwork with my um, IWB, my interactive whiteboard. Okay, let me write 1.5. Oops, let me write 1.5 here and check it with Khan. Oh, I love that noise, it's the most beautiful noise ever. So now, I'm actually gonna take time to show you something else. If you were gonna do this on a number line, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, your lower extreme is three, your upper extreme is eight, quartile one, is at five, quartile two is also at five, and quartile three is at 6.5. Hmm, very interesting. So I'm gonna ask a challenge question, because if you're really watching this video, you should be able to challenge yourself to some um, higher level thinking. What percent of the data in the data set is over five hours of sleep? Let me repeat that question. What percent of our data is greater than five hours of sleep? Ooh, I can't wait to hear the answers for that tomorrow. And if you're watching this through Educanon, hopefully a couple of questions popped up. There will be some review questions that pop up as well. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great night. See you in class tomorrow.